Third and final match of today's Duck Pin Magic features John Owens, our number six seed, taking on Mike Steiner, winner of the last match, 157-140 over Steve Shortridge. And Mike Steiner will start us off here. Should be a pretty good shootout between these two guys. You got the big right-hander, throws a powerful ball, and the very uh, strong left-hander also throws a very strong ball. I'll tell you, when you come back after a layoff, as John Owens is doing, uh, I think it's a big psychological edge to do well. You know, it's like starting all over. Uh, I guess when they bench the the ball player and he's not hitting, or his first time out, he certainly wants to perform. And I think John has finally uh, gathered a lot of confidence in the qualifying and the semifinals, Mike. We're liable to see. We know he's strong. We know that he also knows what the game's all about. One of the only bowlers uh, ever to average 160. A high game of 243 and a high set of 579. And when you average 160, I mean, you're shooting at 500, actually 480. He was ranked number one in the country, 89 and 90. Here's the number two overall qualifier in this tournament behind the man he's bowling, Mike Steiner by just uh, seven pins. Yeah, it probably stuck deeply in his mind as he prepares to bowl frame number two, both bowlers spare, frame one. And a chance to sort of even things up in his own mind at least. Because along with the uh, bowler of the year points, the high qualifier does get an additional uh, $200. So, uh, does carry some prestige and certainly a monetary re reward. Winner of this match graduates to next week's program to take on Kenny Palmer, who uh, last week won three. Seems like every time we come to group, we may have to name these the Ken Palmer Memorial Wing or something, uh, because this uh, seems to make a living out here. To put his name over lane 61 and 62. There you see John sort of went left, had the one. He had a little trouble with his footing on the first ball and was real careful with that particular. He's got, you know, when, you, when you've had your knee operated on, it doesn't take much to get your attention at the line. See, he's moving. His, it's, yeah. uh, he's, and I don't think it's sticking. I think it's a little slippery as we watched Wes and uh, a couple weeks ago have the same problem. We're right? the same lane. So, yeah. seventh frame. John Owens, 24 after two. Mike Steiner, first ball. Got away with it. Left it hang right. Has the two pin remaining. You know, first I break in the game, Mike. I talked to Wes Hamner about that, too. I said, it's tough. You know, he started slow and got behind. He threw that first ball. He almost caught Because I didn't fall down. He says, I threw that like a beginner. <laughs> Wes has very few. He, he won't give you excuses. He, he takes most of the blame. He said, and uh, for the second ball, he just uh, he said, I told myself, just don't throw it through the hole. Because he threw way <laughs> off to the left there. Well, he sort of got off in a defensive mode. Eh? Yeah. So... Uh, Took his strategy away early. Mike, 3-9 remaining, 37 and a 13-pin lead in the second frame. Very tough spare shot here. Should mention some of the other bowlers that you'll uh, be seeing uh, next week's program. Uh, the fifth seed, the bowler who will take on the, uh, the winner of the Kenny Palmer. Uh, and this match uh, next week will be uh, Patty Lacey. The fourth seed, Bob Dietzel, the four bowlers for uh, next week's program. And the winner of next week's program will graduate to our final four, which we really like. That's when we give away the money. That's what we are here for. Get down to the nitty-gritty. That's Bill Honeycutt, the number three seed. Eddie Darling, the number two seed. And sitting on top, waiting for everybody to determine and find it out to determine who's going to battle him for the top prize is Kenny Harrell of uh, Silver Spring, Maryland. So John steps back in, third frame, open in the second, marked in the first frame. Ooh, push through the middle there. Some other numbers you might be interested in as far as John's game is concerned. High game 243, high series of uh, 3, 5, 79. Married, two children. Stephen, age 5, Brittany, age 3, and uh, hails from Sykesville, Maryland. 
two four remaining for ten. Still 13 pins behind if he hits these two. Good style for John. If you watch again, a bowler with very good knee bend still. If you watch it, left arm come through, the rest of the body is just sitting. And it makes, uh, gives you a little room for error as far as your timing. You can be a little quick to the line, and if you just get in position and hold still, the, the arm will come through. Yeah, he's, as you see him signal, he's just not quite getting through the ball. A little, where he's supposed to be hitting it, he's sort of slowing it down a little bit. We call it guiding it, aiming it. Uh, you gotta, you, you guard against overthrowing when you throw the ball, as these two bowlers do, and... It's that happy medium where you just have to let that arm relax it a little bit. Good ball. Yep. Good ball. So John back on the uh, track with the mark in the fourth and uh, in will step Mike Steiner once again. In 1991, Mike uh, posted two Pro Tour victories, his first two of his career. That uh, enabled him to really springboard to the uh, Bowler of the Year Championship, the uh, really most prestigious yearly title that's uh, handed out by the Pro Tour. Sure is. You often don't remember who won the tours, but most of us know who the Bowler of the Year was. And, uh, I guess much to our dismay as members, I do not believe that Mike Steiner has finished winning. Uh, he liked the taste of victory last year. I think he, he grew from it, and has matured, and obviously has the, the tools uh, to perform. And you see an eight count and 65 through four, 44 plus for John Owens, four seven. Well, when you start talking about uh, multiple career Bowler of the Year winners, you really start talking about the elite of uh, the Pro Tour. And, uh, well, there's a number of people that have won at once, but then you start naming off people like uh, Peter Pierce or Jeff Piles or Sweet Labors or Buddy Creamer or you're going back even, even further. Uh, Familiar names. Yeah. <laughs> You've heard them before. They've done other things. And uh, like you say, it's... Uh, a lot of people have, have won pro tours, but very few have been bowler of the year. And we've had a couple of instances where uh, bowlers have won the bowler of the year without winning a tournament. But that's because of the way the, the point structure is set up to reward your performance in the qualifying as well as winning the tournament. So you can accumulate a lot of points during the course of a tournament without actually winning the tournament if you finish in the top five, let's say. Exactly. It's, it's overall performance mm -hmm. is your uh, bowler of the year. And like we've said, it, uh, you can be lucky or a little unlucky and win or not win a pro tour, but have outperformed everyone right down to maybe the final frame. Something happens and you end up second instead of the winner. But if you keep posting numbers uh, and you get the recognition as uh, number one, the bowler of the year, that's uh, well earned. John Owens, frame six, 63 plus and 12 behind. Midway through, both bowlers working on marks. Nice break there as he kicked out the four. There's the three six remaining. 71. No strikes so far in this game. John down four, but Mike working on a spare, and John shooting for a spare in the sixth. Three six. In a must situation already, Mike. Uh, you got to keep pace. You, you don't want to get behind Mike Steiner. Right on the nose. John looks a little more comfortable out there, too. He's got to smooth down. He looks like he's relaxed his body a little bit. Yeah, uh, a little hesitant uh, the first couple of frames. He got off with a mark, but uh, the second and third frames look tight. Well, you know, Wes Hamler sort of phrased it when he said to you, I threw it like a beginner, and then uh, I didn't want to throw it in the hole. And what he was telling you is he was guiding. There was, He was not letting the natural ability take, take over, and... Uh, when you get to this level, as far as uh, how good these bowlers are, we can push it through the middle. And it looks like tough luck. It's not tough luck. 
it's not tough luck. It's uh, you're just not getting the right turn on the ball. You're you're a little tight and you're pushing it instead of the nice snap at the end. 91, 81 plus for John Owens. 91, Mike Steiner. Another close match. We've had uh, some good ones uh, during the past two weeks. Well, we had 145, 151 Ken Palmer, 126, 121 Ken Palmer, 172, 160 again Ken Palmer. Steve Shortridge beat Miller and Harold 153, 141, and of course the last game Mike Steiner at 157, 140 over Steve Shortridge. And we have a close one going right here. Watch out! Good kick. And of course, our last match, uh, the Steiner Shortridge match, was a two pin uh, match in the seventh frame before Mike Steiner put it away with three straight marks. Here you see the pin off the wall. Takes out, I don't know where that pin came from, but it's a strike. It's not where it was going, though. <laughs> Did its job. So John Owens will step in, and he's working on a mark. Strike ties it, Mike. Out of the sixth frame. In fact, he says, put together three in a row. Here's that. Push through the middle and get a little bit of a pressure situation, try to guide the ball, and that's usually what happens. Lack of pin movement. That's exactly what happens. The ball just doesn't get the revolutions that you need to mix them, and you sort of you just drive it through. 87, four down. Mike Steiner has his strike in the seventh. John Lee needs his shot. He gave it a try. It was well worth the try. Uh, I think he said to himself, I'll hit the four pin on the nose before I hit it heavy. He needed to slide that and could have really sort of thrown things back at Mike Steiner. He was, I think he'll shoot the two. And he did. That's what he does for a nine box. 101 plus to 96. Mike Steiner holding the lead as we enter the eighth frame. I'm sure both bowlers have the children on the edge of the sofa. John. <laughs> Son Stephen five and little girl Brittany three. Mike Steiner with Jessica and Mike Jr. seven and five. So probably looks like fun to them. Yeah, you're yeah, rolling on TV just, having some fun, Dad. <laughs> John's just not quite. Why did Daddy do that? Why did he do that? Not because he wanted to, Stephen. Two, four, seven on the left. Three, six, nine, ten on the right. Nice try. Yep. Cleaned up the left side. We'll go up to the right side, try to get the full ten out of the frame. But when Mike Steiner steps up for the eighth and ninth frames, he may be able to do some serious damage to John Owen's hopes here. Definitely opens some distance. Uh, this is a big ball right here. Mike, it can keep it close or it can... Definitely spread it out. Uh, take some of the excitement out of it with the big ball here. Strike in the seven, frame eight. Watch out. You can almost feel it, can you, Mike? Uh, you just do not give this caliber of bowler uh, who has been on the streak that he's been on. He knows how to do this, and you'll see. Watch the knee bend and the leverage. The arm comes through, and there's, there's no hitch in it. And a double header and a big lead coming for Mike. 111 plus in the seventh. And once again, this is a big ball. I mean, it's 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 not over, but he can pretty much close it out with a good ball here. Mm. Yeah. Hold all tickets, folks. Yep. Yep. You get a little careful and you start thinking that you're going to put the guy away, and I think you you, you don't stay as aggressive. And Mike's game, uh, he must stay aggressive. 132 and a 26-pin lead. But John Owens will bowl frames 9 and 10. He'll need a double. As Mike's going to be going at a 150 pace with just a couple 10s. And for John Owens to get to 50, he's going to have to throw a double either here or in the 10th box. Okay, so let's see what happens. John Owens out of Sykesville, Maryland. Won his pro tour stop at a Masters back four or five years ago. Frame nine. Big ball. 
must situation, Mike. You just have to execute, John. You can't try to throw strikes. Yeah. Now, if he makes this, he That's still it. is in the ball game with a double. In the tenth, he can force Mike Steiner to mark. If if he makes this, uh, if he doesn't, we can force Mike to bowl with a triple. But that's about it. Four seven. Picked it, and then gave it a second look because the pin came up on the uh, pin deck and almost took out the intended object pin there. But good still. tour for John. Yeah, I good tour. Please. Probably have to be very pleased with his uh, performance finishing up uh, in the sixth spot. Never too pleased after a loss, but I think an overall evaluation, uh, he has to feel good about his performance. Knock a lot of pins down. If this isn't a strike, it's over. It's over. Okay, so uh, Mike Steinert will uh, take on Kenny Palmer in our very first match next week, which uh, should shape up to be a pretty good one. Mike has uh, been able to win two in a row. Kenny's won three in a row in 1992, 11 in a row dating back to last year's championship run. Spare, 10th frame for John, 126, and he'll have what I call the penalty ball when you... When you're losing, you, you know, you have to throw three balls in the tenth frame, whether they're all strikes or it's a spare and a ball or just <laughs> just three balls. You have to throw them. So John will finish up here. Good tournament to his credit. And he's got a 134. John will do about $450 in prize monies. A basket. Yep. No, that sort of, I call it a floater when the ball just sort of kicks the head pin to the left channel and it doesn't come off the wall. And Mike will finish up. 150 and whatever he hits with this ball. Nothing. All right. So 150, 134, Mike Steinert over John Owens. We'll be back to wrap things up here in Baltimore, Maryland right after this. Join a league. Try open bowling with friends or plan a birthday party for one of the kids. Get out and experience Duckpin magic for yourself. Call your local Duckpin Bowling Center today to find out how you can make the ducks fly. They're listed in the yellow pages. Get out and bowl duck pins today. Back here in Baltimore, Maryland, Joe, we've got uh, a great match coming up in the opening match of next week's show. Well, I tell you, Mike, you got two of the hottest bowlers in the game, Kenny Palmer and Mike Steinert, and I won't miss it. All right, we hope you don't miss it either. For Joe Rainier, I'm Mike Stella. See you again next week, everybody, on Duckpin Magic.